Hello, um, this is a video tutorial about custom shapes. And I am showing you on this webpage a much better explanation about custom shapes than I will give you. This is actually uh, Rune Matson's online book called Programming Design Systems. I think I might have referenced this before. It's got an excellent uh, chapter on color, uh, at Rune Matson on Twitter. Uh, Rune is amazing, does lots of really interesting stuff with graphic design and code for graphic design. And so this, uh, this webpage really will walk you through the, this idea of how you can think about a shape as having different vertices. Again, this is not my work. This is Rune Madsen's work, but this is what I want to cover. What does this kind of code mean? And even better, like what are some things you can do with that? So I will um, let you, I'm going to link to this page. Um, you can just stop watching this video and click on it and read it. But if you want to keep watching, I'm going to kind of give you my own take on this sort of stuff. What I'm talking about is custom shapes. So what do I mean by custom shapes? So you might be familiar with a rectangle, which looks like this. Or perhaps a circle, also known as an ellipse, which looks like this. There is a line, which looks like this, and a point, which looks like this, and a triangle, which looks like this, and I think this might be everything. So there are a list of defined primitive shapes, primitive geometry, set kinds of polygons, set kinds of shapes that you could call with a function and draw in P5. Okay, let's start with something simpler. What if I wanted to do this shape? So this shape is, we can think of it as a polygon, a shape with many sides. And a polygon can be defined by its vertices. The vertices being each of these points that connects the sides. And this is actually one, two, three, four, five. So actually, if you have a polygon with four arbitrary sides, like this, you can actually do this with the quad function. The quad function in P5, or processing, both of all this code is for processing or P5, allows you to specify four points. But what I want to do is make a custom shape. So the only way for me to do this, that I know of at least, is to use a function called begin shape. And use a function called end shape. So if I use these functions begin shape and end shape, what I can do is def in between begin and end, I can set any number of arbitrary vertices. So I can say vertex. Vertex over and over again. Now I could do this if, if I were in processing, this will actually also work in 3D and there's a P-shape object and all sorts of fancy stuff that you can do. But I just want to look at it from the simple 2D lens and we're going to do it in P5. Um, and so, um, so this is the basic idea. Begin shape, and this indentation is unnecessary. I'm putting it there just sort of for visual effect. But this is the idea. Now, so let's take a look at that and make sure it works. So I'm going to come over here. And oops, sorry everybody, that's the wrong window. I'm going to say uh, begin shape. And I'm going to say vertex. I'm just going to make up some points. 150, vertex 220, <laughs> vertex 200, 100, uh, vertex 50. I'm not very good at picking numbers. I need my random number book. Vertex 25, 50. I have no idea what I've just done. I'm going to say end shape. And now I'm going to hit refresh. And look, there it is. So in theory, that's my shape. Now I wasn't very thoughtful about the vertices and the order. The order does really matter. And we can see if I did something weird with the order because this shape can be filled or stroked in the same way that, um, by that I mean setting the outline color or the fill color. Um, so I could say uh, stroke 255 and fill, no fill, just to sort of see. No fill, fill, no fill. No fill, no fill for you. Uh, we can see, ah yeah, so that's it, so look at that. So uh, maybe I didn't do anything too crazy. Those are all the points. Notice how you could, with no fill, you can actually think of this as a path. So it could be a shape that's filled and enclosed or it could be a path. And incidentally, it, if I wanted to close it, right, I could say, oh, let me put the first point again. Now it's closed, but that's kind of silly, right? What actually I can do is just write the argument close in here. And now you can see it closed it automatically. But I'm going to take that out. Now one thing I should mention is there actually is other stuff that can go in here. Maybe I need to come back in a whole separate video to go through all those possibilities. But I can specify the kind of shape. Like if I, there's something called a triangle strip, which will actually, if I give it a whole bunch of points, it'll put a whole bunch of triangles in between all of those things. And I have a feeling that if I go to, I'm going to go to the processing documentation, because I know that'll come up. Uh, begin shape processing. 
we can see a lot of those possibilities here, right? Lines, uh, triangles, like now if I use those points, it's not one shape, but it's th every three vertices will make a separate triangle. Triangle strip will connect it with a bunch of triangles. Triangle fan, you could use quads, you can use, and I think I used this in like the Pearl and Noise terrain challenge and a bunch of my different coding challenges, but I'm gonna be, in this video, I just wanna keep things simple and I just want to uh, use uh, vertex. So there we go, so that's the idea. Now, um, there's two things that I wanna mention here. Number one is what would be interesting for me to do is come up with an algorithm that sets all these vertices. You know, what's the point really of me manually setting these vertices? More likely, I might wanna do something like, I'm gonna do this really quickly. Like what if I were to say, for let a equals zero, a, and okay, so incidentally I'm using a for loop, so for some reason you watch this video before I used for loop, I have to go back and watch the loops video. I should probably just stop saying that. I'm gonna say a is less than 360, a plus equals 10, and then what I'm gonna do, and this is I'm gonna use something called polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation. Ah, uh, this is a little bit of an aside, but this is worth it. I don't know if this is worth doing. I'm gonna say a let x equal, just to demonstrate the idea, uh, 100 times sine of a, let y equals 100 times cosine of a uh, plus uh, 200 plus 200. And then I'm gonna say vertex, and I have a reason why I'm doing this actually. I'm gonna say vertex x, y. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, I got something crazy. Well, I said all these vertices all over the place. So what I'm actually doing is something called polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation. I uh, linked to a video that goes over it in more detail. But basically, if I have this angle A, what I want is to just keep changing that angle A to set a whole bunch of vertices around a circle. And I can use cosine and sine trigonometry math to get all those points. And I'll link to a video that goes through that in more detail. But one of the reasons why this worked really weirdly is I didn't set the angle mode two degrees. Because I'm thinking about the full way around the circle is 360 degrees and it's using a radians, which is a different, by default, different form of measurement. So now we can see there it is. And I want to say uh, close. So now I want to, let me actually um, say let spacing equal 50. I'm going to have this be spacing. And we can see that's what I get. Now th what's interesting about this is I'm now going to put this into draw. And I can have spacing be variable. So I'm going to say spacing equals, and <laughs> I just did this. Oh, I did this harmonic motion challenge. That was a disaster. I could have that value oscillate. Oh, let's do this. I'm off the beaten path. This is really just a tutorial about custom shapes. But I'm going to use a sine wave in it, which might be a bad idea, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to have a variable called t. And I'm going to set it equal to zero. Let, 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 let me be more simple about this. Okay, let spacing equal map mouse x, which goes between zero and width to between, um, what I want the spacing to be like, uh, five degrees and 100 degrees. So let's at least see this work. Whoa, oh, I forgot to draw the background in here. So let me put the background in draw. So you can see, Right? I'm getting, I'm changing that angle, so I'm slowly increasing the resolution of the circle. So the point that I wanted to show this to you is not because this is some beautiful pattern that you should use, but the reason why you might use custom shapes and set vertices is actually to have an algorithm to find those vertices. So what if you wanted to make a bubble, a cloud? So I actually have a, com a coding train community project about making a cloud, which I'll also link to in here, which this could form the basis. I think I've done stuff with like a purling noise blob coding challenge at one point that this also relates to. So there's a lot of possibilities here. And what I was going to do was use a sine wave to have this feel like it's breathing it's back and forth, back and forth. So that's maybe an, uh, something that you should try as an exercise after this video. So um, what I want to do, I'm going to leave this here, but I'm going to comment this out again. And I want to just talk about one other thing. So here we go. Remember this weird shape that I created? This shape is a polygon that has a set of vertices. But in addition to vertex, there's actually something called curve vertex that I can call. 
Now there's also something called Bezier vertex. And Bezier vertex is a kind of curve vertex for a special kind of curve called a Bezier curve. And actually the pay, Runes custom shape page goes through that in detail. I'm gonna save Bezier curves for like another video because I don't even know if I understand them <laughs> at this moment. So I have to go read Runes excellent description and then come back to it. But curve vertex, what curve vertex does is it says, oh, instead of having like a hard edge here, let's try to curve around that edge. But here's the thing. I should probably make this a separate video, but I'm in this video, so you have to be watching all the way to the end of this video. Um, here's the thing that's tricky, and I'm, I'm gonna, uh, there's gonna be some magic erasing in a sec that's gonna happen here. So one of the trickiest things about working with curves is that you're gonna suddenly discover when you use curve vertex, points just disappear. Why? Let's say I have these three points. Now we could look at this and we could say to ourselves, like, I kind of know what I meant. I want to draw this curve. But if you think about it more, there's actually no way for the computer to know how to draw this curve without more information. Because why couldn't it be like this? Or something. Uh, that's, that's a little bit weird. I, 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 let me try that again. Why couldn't it be like this? This would be a valid curve. And the difference is, how do I enter the curve? I've kind of done a poor job of drawing this, but I think the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna make it more clear. What if there was like a secret point right over here that said how to enter this curve? Or the secret point was over here that said how to enter the curve, and up here it would be over here, right? This is gonna look different if there's, so curves, require additional points that control the entry and exit of the curve. Do I, should I, should I, do I need to curve and like come down here or do I need to curve and like end up over here? And so it can be really confusing, and, uh, but you have to be aware of this. So let's actually go and look at the code and see if we can make this work. And let me simplify things actually. Let me actually make up some specific ver vertices. So I'm gonna say vertex, uh, um, what, what's the size of the window? It's 200, 200. So I'm going to say vertex uh, 10, 200, 150, and then uh, and let's actually make this 100, 200, and then 300, 200. Oh, and pff, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm putting it all in one line. Vertex, I don't know, can you see this bottom down here? I want three vertices. Okay, and now let's take a look at this. Oh, do I have close? I want to take out close. And I messed up the middle one. I want this to be at 200. So this is, those are my three vertices. So I want to make this a curve. So a couple things. One is let me just draw these points so we can see them uh, separately also. Uh, 300, 200. I mean, this is very redundant what I'm doing, but uh, stroke weight four, and then stroke, whoops, then let's do stroke weight one. Okay, so I can see points there. So I'm gonna change this to curve vertex, and you're gonna see what I mean. Curve vertex, and I don't see anything anymore. <laughs> now, I, I should have done this with more than, I should do this with four points. So let's make this 150, 50, and uh, 250, like 60 or something. So you're gonna see, oh boy, let's, and that's also, my apologies, um, let's also put these as the actual points we're drawing. Um, and where, where does this go? Whoops, uh, what did I say, 150, I'm <laughs> 150, 50, and, 250, 60. So you can see these points are actually controlling how this curve looks. And there could be many more points. It's just controlling the entry of the curve. So like what if I made this point mouse x, mouse y? This is what I'm trying to demonstrate. Mouse x, took me a while to get to this, but mouse x, mouse y. And now I'm gonna make that first point mouse x, mouse y. So you can see as I move this around, it changes, let's zoom in a little bit more, it changes the entry to the curve. And actually, this is an interesting way to make something interactive. 
Like imagine if this oscillated up and down, it's almost like this wiggling string or something. So again, as you're building these custom shapes, the shape now is only those two points, right? If I were to say close, you know, oh, interestingly enough, it's like, ah, oh, look, it actually connected it all the way around to the first point. So the first point is controlling, whoa, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of a nice. So you can imagine creating some interesting animation by just, uh, wow, close really made the, interesting if you do close, this whole problem kind of goes away. I don't know if it's a problem, but it doesn't enter. It comes around to the end. So that's kind of interesting. I just discovered that now. So you can see the difference if I use close because uh, it adds the point. The, another thing that you can do often which is sort of the same thing, is I could duplicate the last point twice. So that's sort of like, I, that last point is also the control point for yourself. So you can see it's not changing, but I am including the first point twice. So I could do that also, like I could include the first point twice instead of mouse X, mouse Y. And now I kind of have, whoops, whoops, I, that's not the first point. I could, uh, sorry, if there was a different first point, which was originally uh, 100, 200, right? So if I have that twice and get rid of mouse X, mouse Y, this can also be a strategy. So it's kind of like just duplicate the first point and duplicate the last point, but you don't have as much control. I would need yet another point, right? Like this point, the mouse, <laughs> to control that. So you can see now I can control this with the mouse. So there's so many possibilities. I'm sorry that I kind of went off the deep end then with like messing around with this. But the point is, and also incidentally, I can mix curve vertex and vertex. Now let's see if we can make this more obvious. Or maybe that doesn't work. So I'm pretty sure you can do that in processing. I'm gonna have to investigate if that works in P5 or not. But the idea being that I can mix, some are curved, some are jagged. So to recap, Custom shapes are shapes that you def are polygons or paths that you define by a set of vertices. You can make you can you can have them be tiled by certain kinds of quad strips or triangle strips or that kind of thing. You can have curved vertices or regular vertices. Curved, if you have curved, you need to have control points for the curve. And the reason for doing that is quite possibly more likely because you want to have something more dynamic. Oh, and look, I connected these in this weird, crazy way. So here's the like ending Frankenstein thing of this like weird <laughs> hard-coded thing and circle. Something I want to mention actually before I, I wrap up with the computer is that you might be asking yourself like, well, what's the math that calculates this curve? Well, there are different kinds of mathematical functions to figure out how a curve goes between two different points. Uh, I mentioned a Bezier curve. There's a specific kind of Bezier function, and it, it works pretty differently than this, but it, it is something you could look at. But this is actually known as a Catmull. This, this is using P5 and use the Catmull ROM spline, spline being kind of another word for curve. And it, these are people's names who came up with this algorithm. So I'll try to include a link to uh, the historical information about the Catmull ROM spline. And I, I apologize if I, I spelled that or said that wrong. So I hope you make what, if you're interested, if you don't know what to make from this, take a look at the link to the cloud, community cloud uh, repository. I mean, you might be watching this a year in the future. Hopefully it'll still be there. Um, but this is a project that's happening in 2017 for processing day which is October 21st, 2017, uh, for the name tags at Processing Day. So if you're interested, contribute to that, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.